Hey guys, and welcome back to our second Q&A. Uh, we just want to say thank you for all of your comments and all of your questions. We have like a whole mailbox full. <laughs> and it means so much to us that uh, we are able to share uh, and connect with you guys in this way. For the new viewers uh, who haven't done it already, push the subscribe button and the, there's a bell so then you will be notified every time we have a new update. We're also going to make these um, subject videos, they're going to be there from next week every Tuesday. So stay tuned! Okay, I said all the things you have to say on YouTube and we will now start with the second Q&A. So, uh, for the question still of last time that we didn't manage to ask, the first one is, how is it possible that we live in a universe with all kinds of races, light and dark beings, and at the same time we only perceive our own individual hologram? What? <laughs> how is it possible that we live, that there are all these things, the races, the light, the dark and the universe, and at the same time we only perceive our own hologram, our own perceptions. How does it? So, in order of, in order of experience this hologram, in order of re-experience how it is to have an individual uh, live stream, we needed to create different holograms, and we of course needed them at the same place at the same time, in order of us mixing up together and once again becoming free of one another. Uh, if we would all be only tuned into one hologram, our experience would be too similar. The friction that we were supposed to make wouldn't be as big as a movement as we uh, tended to experience. So in order of having the right amount of friction, which means the right amount of development that will help our experience during this lifetime, <laughs> we need different holograms. You can also look into it as a perception of energy form. You are one energy form. In order of, of uh, expansion, you need to become aligned with another energy form. And together, you will create a third energy form. Um, what is really beautiful about this moment is time. In time is that we're becoming more and more aware of these holograms. And we're becoming more and more aware that even we are living in each our world reality we're still a part of the same one. And this is a note uh, very good to remember. Next one. What is the secret to have more discipline to work on things I want to do in life and not be distracted from them all the time? <laughs> you go to military school. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So the, you, what you need to look into is what is your true desire? Because you say the things you want to focus on, why can't I do that? Because there is a part of you uh, that doesn't wish to do it. There is a part of you there for whatever reason are afraid of taking that step. So in order of getting the discipline to do what you want in life, you need to look into why don't you do it? You need to look into what is your underlying a desire or what is your safe zone. So look into it and you can ask a new question. <laughs> I always felt I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, not feeling home in my country. Um, it feels better over time, but how can I feel more home? Uh, what we need to realize is that a lot of us are mixed races. Um, from Earth, but also outside of this planet reality. And therefore there is this longing of home. There's this longing of a place that doesn't really exist around us on planet Earth, but you can reconnect to it within yourself. So if you are one of those people who doesn't feel home no matter where you go, it is because you need to find that center of home within yourself and learn to be okay with that you always have that feeling of longing for somewhere else. Um, a lot of these, all of these like being incarnated in this time have that inner longing for home without being able to fully address it and knowing what home is. So lesson in life, find home within yourself 
and create a space um, that is a vibrational match to love and that kind of home that you're seeking for yourself. What is a secret for more fun in life? <laughs> well, you should get a big portion of humor and applicate it in everyday life. So, <laughs> so you need to look at where you are in your own development. Are you a person who takes life too serious? Are you a person who are very demanding on yourself? Are you a person who have been working very hard, controlled and structured? Then you need to break free from it. The way that you have to start is in the small. So if you fear chaos, create chaos. If you fear noise, go to a concert. So for you who are in these control patterns, it's about breaking the control in order of breaking free of your own creative prison. To apply more joy in life is, I know it sounds crazy, but it's simply a choice. It, it is a choice of you looking into yourself and asking, what is fun for me? And next step is doing it. So I'm going to try to read this question the way we received it, more or less. <clears throat> I love it already. Can I work on the things that are difficult for me? Or am I just stuck into something that is too hard to work on? Or is the trick not to work on anything and just be and let the good stuff appear the mag like the magic happens? <laughs> so step number one, go out of your brain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is of course with all the love in my heart um, but but it is really this thing of a mental perception how to do what to do what not to do and and what we do is we get stuck in this loop loop of confusion and the truth is if we just let go of this very moment this very loop everything flows exactly the way that it's supposed to and if you are not doing what you think you're supposed to do because you didn't do what you thought you should do, then that will show the moment you let go of everything because that will be the one thing that you then will be facing. So we're gonna move to the questions we received for this Q&A, so Q&A two. Uh, the first one is, what does it mean if your heart beats irregular from time to time? It really depends on the person, but as I can see, you are one of these very sensitive persons. You are one of these people who are reacting uh, physically to energetic forms surrounding you and definitely also your own emotional system. So you both react on your own feelings, but also the collective feelings. And in this time, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of fear and movements and <clears throat> etc. So for you, it just simply means that you are responding to something within or around you that you may not have listened to. So that creates fear because when it touches our heart, we get this feeling of, oh, oh my God, what is this? Am I gonna get a heart attack? And in that moment, what you wanna do is you wanna ask yourself, how was my thought patterns just before this happened? How have my day been? When today did I neglect my own sensitivity? Because often what happens is that so much is going on and probably anxiety haven't been uh, activated, but you've been so busy being there for everybody else that you have not really acknowledged that part of you. So when you step in to this moment of peace, finally, then your heart will <gasps> See me. And that's all it is asking for. Simply for you to see you with love. Beautiful. Um, what happens step by step when we die? Are we allowed to see what effect we have had on other people? Both good and bad. <clears throat> so the second that you die, you realize there is no good and bad. Because no matter which role that you chose to take in this life, it is not judged as good or bad when you come in the in-between. We will always run through the life that we just have been living and we can clearly see which effect we have had upon other people 
uh, and our roles if we played them the way that we attempted to do. Uh, and by running through that, we are sort of kind of coming to the conclusion of what we want to do next. For those who reincarnate on Earth, it is often that they have an experience that they want to. Uh, often, <laughs> the, the experience they just had is a part of what they want to do next. So we always take this step where your soul stream is aligned to the journeys that you choose to uh, walk through. And parts of your soul, like the energy of who you were in this incarnation sometimes stays around for longer at Earth when people are in grief or they didn't you weren't able to fully let go of each other yet and stuff like that. So then there's a part of that energy stream who just have been living on Earth, who is still flowing around here. Um, and that, now I'll say something that doesn't make sense because we are without time and space, but that needs to let go before you can reincarnate. But as there doesn't exist time or space, it's not something that you feel when you're up here. It is like, like a dream, a blink of an eye, and then you are where you have to be. Um, yeah, I hope this made a bit of sense. <laughs> or else, just write us. <laughs> Will the aliens appear more physically in the future? Can we work with them? We are already working with them. We have been working with them for ages. It is not something new to our species to know that uh, aliens is a part of creation. But what will be more present in the future to come, not the next 10 years, but somewhere after that, is um, the collective knowledge of their existence and the influence on our planet and our species. What was the relationship between Jesus and Maria Magdalene? Did they have children? How many? And what happens to them after Jesus' crucifixion? Such a small question, people asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite so what we need to do when we are crossing religions, is we need to respect every aspect created. One aspect is that Jesus never existed, that he was only an energetic form. He is a symbol of unconditionally love. And Maria Magdalena was that indeed too, but more grounded and linked to the human suffering and pain and motherhood. When you put the two together, they created this outcome called the Holy Grail, and some would call it their child Sarah, which means that you simply take what is above and what is under and connect it into one. An integrated, grounded, unconditionally love and light, where man and female are fully balanced within one creation of existence. Another aspect is those who look back in the story. Did they exist? What were their relationships? As I recall it and as I see it from my perception were that <coughs> Jesus had a role of being an example for humanity, being an example also for the universe of sharing and carrying and sending out that unconditional love. To walk a journey like that on our planet in whatever century is not an easy job. And you need all the support in the world that you can get. So he had these disciples who were with him. And Maria Magdalena was amongst them. As I see it and as I proceed it, they had a relationship. They were together. But when you look at Jesus, he loved everyone equally. So I would say that the love he had for Maria is the same love that he had for Johannes. Only that on a physical level, him and Maria were more integrated, <laughs> if you can put it like that, than he would be with Johannes, for example. What it does and the history behind it is super long. It's a beautiful chapter to dive into. And if you guys wish me to dive into it, I would love to just uh, send us a, a note right in the comments below. If you, if you need this, I will do it. Uh, how many kids do they have? So this is also a very um, 
The reason why I look like this is because what I see is that they had human bounded kids, but they also had energetically this holy grail kid. What I cannot see, because I see the energetic form, is I cannot see if she was human formed or if she just was there in an energetic form. I see two boys and a girl and they were surrounded by a lot of kids. They were always playing around. Some of them was fleeing from Israel to Egypt and all the way down to France and etc. So they were a group together. But what we need to realize when we talk about whose kids are what is that the love that Jesus had for everyone was as if it was his, was his own. There is no separation in the love that he shined out and he shared. So that is also one of the reasons there is so much confusion about was the one, was the three, was the two, <laughs> who are the truthful bloodline. We all are. So yeah, was this deep enough or do you need it to go deeper? I will do it, but I will only open this chapter if it's something uh, you desire to know. Beautiful. You often have an answer with yes and no. <laughs> that for me is so clear. I see all the time yes and no in how people and situations are. I can see both sides. But it confuses my mind and therefore my body inside of me. It is also often yes and no. Therefore, I feel different and not clear for myself and the people who surround me. How can I deal with this? So the whole yes and no thing is because we are back to the part where there is so many perceptions and also back to the part where there is no wrong. There just is. So you always and in every single moment every single day you have to feel what is right for me in this now what is right for me in this day what is aligned with where my soul is flowing to in this exact moment what was a vibrationally matched yesterday and your desire yesterday doesn't necessarily mean that this is your desire tomorrow you are ever floating in energy so of course you're confused Take it for somebody who holds all perceptions. I'm super confused <laughs> all the time. But that is part of life. And that is part of re-experiencing what you were sent here for. So instead of constantly tapping into it as a burden, you could see it as a gift. A gift of the ever-floating unknown. The gift of being able to shift from time to time, from day to day, and not having to stay stuck in one perception of life. It's your creation. You create what you wish in your life, in your future. What is spiritual bypassing? <laughs> so we have this period in time where spirituality is coming to the surface, right? We have a lot of guru gurus and a lot of teachers and what we do is we take it to a mental level we know what to say we are all love we are all light i feel happy i feel blessed but if you just are saying it from a mental perception but you're emotionally and physically are not there it becomes spiritual bypassing that means that you will keep attracting situations that want to trigger <laughs> those feelings that you haven't paid attention to. So your need for control grows more and more because if you, if you let go of control, you will shadow Then you will see all this darkness underneath. And it is not darkness. It is simply you needing to pay attention to every aspect of yourself. It's one of the reasons that I'm not just sending happy videos out saying that I am perfect because I am far from perfect. But what I need to do and what we all need to do is honor every single aspect of ourselves and fully allow it, fully embrace it. When you have no fear on any part or particle of you, you become free and there will be no space for bypassing. Guys, I think um, we are reaching an end 
of this second uh, q a once again <laughs> i just want to thank you so much for being with us and please let us know how this felt for you and if you can use these answers along your journey i wish you a beautiful week and can't wait to see you again namaste